The works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than ye shall you do, because I go to my Father. We've got to do the works of Jesus. And if we don't do the works of Jesus, somewhere we're missing something. Jesus came to show us the Father, and we are coming to show Jesus. Second Corinthians 4.11, the life of Jesus must be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Romans 8 and 11, if the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in us, He will quicken our mortal bodies. We need to show forth the life and the Spirit of the Christ. Okay, Creation is waiting for the sons of God to be revealed. The destiny and the plan and the predestination of God for you is to be conformed to the image of His dear Son. As you behold His glory, you must come forth in the very image of the Son of the Most High God. Ephesians 3 verse 16. May he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and to be reinforced with might and power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. Verse 17. May Christ through your faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. That you may be strong and that you might have the power to apprehend and grasp with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth. Now I want you to look at all the other translations. He doesn't say you must know the breadth, length, height and depth of the love. I want you, says Paul, to have the power to be able to apprehend and to be able to grasp what I'm going to say now. You must have power to understand the length, the height, the breadth, and the depth of what? Verse 19. That you may really come to know practically through experience for yourself the love of Christ. King James would say, and to know the love of Christ. So the depth, length, height, and breadth is something different than the love, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God. He says, I want you to have the power to be able to apprehend, and after you've apprehended, you must grasp something. First, the length, breadth, height, and depth. Second, to know the love of Christ. And thirdly, to be totally filled with out your being unto all the fullness of God. Listen, and that you may have the richest. Now remember, it's coming out of the riches of His glory. The richest measure of the divine presence. And that you might become a body holy Filled and flooded with God Himself. You must be able to know that. For all the geometrical people, all sides equal a cube. You must be able to know that. And you must be able to know. Plus, you must know the love. That passes all understanding. Plus, you must be filled. With all that is God. Your body wholly flooded. Filled with all the fullness of, sorry I'm writing so far, God himself. That is the measure. measured off for you. Now, to him who by and in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within you is able to carry out this purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires,
thoughts, hopes, and dreams that is, He is able to do it in and for you. <laughs> so to have this, God says, ask. And God is able to do much more above, beyond. And you can put in any adjective if you ask, God is able. So he says, if you want to understand this, you must grasp it with the saints. Now there's two saints. The ones have passed on and the others are on the earth. That is mostly the saints that have passed on. How do I know that? He says in uh, Revelation, you can start at chapter 19, 20, 21, 22. I saw the city coming out of heaven, down from God. Its length was as long as its breath, was as wide as it was high. It had no need of the sun or the moon because the lamb was the light. It's lying four square. The gates are not shut neither by day, neither by night. So in Ephesians he says, I want you to know that length, breadth, height and depth. He says, but you must be able to apprehend and grasp. But to have that, you need power from God. If you haven't got the power, you'll never grasp what I'm trying to say with breadth, length, height, and depth. So in Hebrews 11, it says, uh, if these saints kept looking back to the city from which they came from, they would have reason to turn back. But now they proclaim that they are looking for a city who has foundations whereof God is the builder and erector. Therefore God has prepared for them a city. Hebrews 11. Now Hebrews 12. From verse 18 through 24 it says, We have not come to a mountain that can be touched with flames, fire. The people said, please don't add another word. You remember when the animals touched the mountain, they had to be stoned. But we have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to the innumerable company of angels, to the spirits of saints made perfect. Luke 11. Verse 9 is good enough. So I say to you, ask and keep on asking and it shall be given you. Verse 13. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? In Ephesians 3, we read that we must be filled with all the fullness of God. We must be a body wholly filled and flooded with all the fullness of God Himself. He says, how much more? <laughs> if you ask far and above what you can think or pray for when you ask. Now, Luke 11 says, your Father will give you the Holy Spirit. He says, he will not just give it to you, he says, how much more will he give the Holy Spirit if you can just ask. And that Holy Spirit will then bring you to be filled with all the fullness of God. Malachi 4. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud Jay and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Now you've got to understand the prophets to understand the prophets. John the Baptist, the Bible says, all the prophets were unto John. The Baptist, not the apostle. Verse 2. 
But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and he shall go forth and grow as calves in the soul. Now we all agree that must be Jesus. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. That's when the burning was there. In the day that I shall do this, says the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgment. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Behold, you must remember Moses with a law. And I will send you Elijah, the prophet. Before that great and dreadful day of the burning. And then the fathers will turn to the children, and the children will turn to the fathers. We want another measure, not a double portion. We want another spirit, not Elijah's. We want another father, not Elijah. We want to say, our father, give us the Holy Spirit. And you have much more than what we can ask, much more than what we can think. We want to be holy filled and flooded with almighty God. I don't want Elijah. I don't want a double portion. I don't want to call anybody father. My father. So Matthew 11, John sends his disciples, said, are you the one? Then talking, John says, here's the fire. Are you the one? Or do we still wait? Yeah. Go tell John yeah. what you see in here, blind sea, lame walk, dead are raised, gospel is preached to the poor. So Jesus turned around and said, who did you go out to see? A reed blowing in the wind? Yeah. Prophet, I say to you more than a prophet. Yeah. Said no greater man born out of woman than John, but the smallest in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. This is the greatest man ever born out of woman because he's the last of the Messianic prophets. But the smallest in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. So if you say yes to Jesus, you are greater than John ever was. So Jesus goes on in Matthew 11. And he comes to verse 15. He says, if you want to receive it, this John that is the greatest, but you are in the kingdom are greater than him. If you want to receive it, this is the Elijah that was to come. Not maybe, not a type of, not a shadow of, I'm sorry, Get the Bible clear. This is the fulfillment of Malachi because now this is the Elijah that's turning the hearts of the fathers and the children. And the next thing on the agenda is the fire that will burn up all the chaff. <coughs> Can I tell you something what John 3.34 says? The Father give him the Spirit not with measure. You can't measure it because it's much more. It's far and above, exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think to be filled with all the fullness of God Himself. Why do you want Elijah if you can have Jesus? Why do you want a double portion if you can have it without measure? Now, in 2 Peter chapter 1, I, I hope I'm right. Peter says something to this effect. We were with him on the mountain when we heard these things and saw his glory. What happened on the mountain that Peter talks about? It says after seven days, or six days on the seventh day, Jesus took with him, or John, Peter, and James. Is that right? took them on a high mountain. A cloud overshadowed the mountain. And God spoke out of heaven. The cloud was heaven manifesting. And there appeared unto them Moses, the law, 
and Elijah the prophets. So everything about Jesus, the law and the prophets said, the law and the prophets said, the law and the prophets said. So Jesus had to appear by John being love, Peter being hope, and James being faith. How can you say you have faith and you haven't got the works? The hope that he set before us says, Peter, John says, let us love one another. Okay, just for the interesting sake. So he's taking the whole New Testament story and he's taking the Old Testament story. He says, here we have the law and the prophets and we're joining them with love, faith, faith hope, and love. Okay? Go there. So there stands Jesus in all his glory. This Elijah thing comes out of 2 Kings chapter 2, you know, as from verse 9 where Elijah said to Elisha, what is it that you desire of me? And Elisha said, a double portion of your spirit. He said, if you see me when I go, listen to this, if you see me when I go, it will be so. So when the fiery chariots came and departed them, Elijah went up in a whirlwind, not on the chariot, in a whirlwind up to heaven. Elisha tore his clothes and he screamed, My father, my father, chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. So we want the Elijah anointing back in the church and we want to call people father and draw from their powers. And you must anoint me and you must anoint and you must and you must give. So we want fathers according to the Elijah measure to get double portions and we call people my father, my father. But Isaiah 9 and 5 says, Unto us a child is born, a son is given, government shall be upon his shoulders. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. So Jesus is called Everlasting Father because I and the Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father, Philip. Why don't you, why do you struggle to know the Father? I and the Father are one. So Acts chapter 1. You will receive power, verse 8. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Remember? The Bible says, and a cloud came, and they saw him. It's there, actually. And they saw him. And the Bible says, and when they saw him, no more. Exactly the same as 2 Kings 2. And when he saw him, no more. He picked up his mantle. And when they saw him, no more. They came, the angels, and said, why do you look into heaven like this, this same Jesus will come in like manner because you saw it and you saw it no more. Elisha, you saw it, you saw it no more. You got the double portion. So disciples, you saw it, you saw it no more. Now go tarry (laughs) in the city of Jerusalem till you receive the promise of the... So... Acts chapter 2, after Jesus has received the promise of the Father, which is the promised Holy Spirit, He made this outpouring which you now see and hear. The promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit. So, uh, Matthew 23 verse 9, Call no man on earth Father, for you have one Father. Matthew 17. Hmm. Now we're in the cloud, verse 5. While he was still speaking, behold, a shining cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am and always have been delighted. Listen to Him. So Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, listen to this. God who it's hundred times, diverse manners, You must get every word because every word is in the message. Spoke to the fathers. By the prophets. Has in these last days spoken to us by the Son. Whom He has appointed heir of all things. Verse 3. He is the brightness. The outraying of the glory of the Father. So there's faith, hope, and love on the mountain. The law and the prophets just went. And the voice says, now you've got to listen to the Son. If you've got Jesus, you'll have it all. But we concentrate on attributes instead of Him who brings the attributes. 
Oh, I want you to be filled with all the fullness of love. No, I want you to know the love that surpasses knowledge so that you can be filled. So let's go on. When the disciples heard it, verse 6, they fell on their faces and were seized with alarm and struck with fear. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they raised their eyes, get it, they saw no one but Jesus only. He's a shelter in the time of storm. He's a refuge in the time of need. You can run under the wings of His shelter. You can find rest in His bosom. If you're weary and downtrodden, laden, He can give you rest. If you're thirsty, He's the fountain of living water. If you're living in darkness, He's the light of the world. If you're hungry, He's the bread of life. He is it all. Okay, let's go to Luke 6, verse 38. Give, and it will be given you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, or they pour into the bosom of your robe and bag. For the measure you deal out, with that measure you use when you confer benefits on others, it will be measured back to you. Because of this saying, he told them this proverb. Can a blind guide a blind man? A pupil is not superior to his teacher. But everyone, when he is completely trained, readjusted and restored and set to rights and perfected, will be like his teacher. So give, not money. It's not a financial scripture. It's a judging, measuring, giving, loving scripture. It's about the measure of the Christ. Because the context is, if you don't understand, says Jesus, let me tell you a proverb. A blind cannot lead the blind, they will both fall in the ditch. But let me tell you this. If a pupil is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. So Philip, if you see me, you've seen the Father. Disciples, the works that I do, shall you do also. Because I go to the Father. After Jesus received the promised Holy Spirit of the Father, He promised it out what you now see and hear from the Father. Romans 8 and Galatians 4 says more or less the same in a few verses. Galatians 4 says, At the fullness of time, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, under the law, to redeem those that were under the law. Towards what? Towards the adoption of sons. That word adoption is not the word we use today that I'm adopting a child. Okay, the word there in the Greek word means to place upon. That's right. The Greek word there is to place, to put and say and sit there and say, that is my son. So God did something through Christ by taking us out of the law to place us, not adopt us like, oh, I'm going to, you know, hospital, I'm going to adopt a little child. No, it's to place him and say, that is my son. For that reason, God has Poured in our hearts the spirit of the Son. And that spirit is crying. Yeah, we all know that word. Abba, Father. Now, if you read the context, you're going to go to the two places where Jesus said, Abba, Father, to understand the Aramic word because it's not Greek, it's not Hebrew, it's Aramic. And it doesn't mean daddy. Daddy God. No, he's not Daddy God. He's Father. It's Romans 8, 29, 2 Corinthians 13, Galatians 4, 29. I mean, our whole purpose is to come forth in his image. Look like, walk like, talk like, do like Christ. But we've got to get rid of the double portion Elijah Spirit Father cult. You can only draw from what you're looking at. Yes, we lay hands on each other. Yes, we anoint each other. Yes, we transfer to one another. Yes, we just implant to one another. Yes, we bless one another. But we must always have something else in mind. My Father. Ephesians 4 in closing. Verse 8 says, Therefore it is said when he ascended on high. Remember Acts 1 and 8, the cloud took him. He led captivity captive and he bestowed gifts on men. But now what is this that he ascended means that he first descended out of heaven and stuff like that? And he, gave, he gives away varied, not his ministries. His intention was the perfecting 
and the full equipping of the saints. That they should do the work of ministering toward building up Christ's body. Verse 13, that it might develop until we all attain oneness in the faith and in the comprehension of the knowledge of the Son of God, that we might arrive at really mature manhood. Now listen, the completeness of personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection, the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Christ and the completeness found in Him. What measure do you want? Or do you want a portion? You can be satisfied with a double portion of Elijah or you can go for the measure of the Christ that is nothing less than the stature of the fullness of Christ Himself which is abundantly far and above all that you can ask or think to be filled with holy, filled and flooded with God Himself, the Spirit of the Son, my Father, my Father.